Nickel was on Helwani, and Bo Nickel said, "I'm a, I'm fighting on the main card." And Ariel corrected him. This is December 10th, right? Bo's UFC Octagon debut, right? He's not in the UFC. Don't forget that when you're on the Contender Series. I made this mistake. I made this mistake on the Ultimate Fighter. Somebody had won on the Ultimate Fighter, which got them into the house, and I'm sitting cage side. Dana's in the middle. John Jones is on the other side. And I say to the guy, he comes over and he looks at us coaches after his fight. And I said, welcome to the UFC. And Dana turns and corrects me and says, welcome to the ultimate fighter. They're not in the UFC yet. But it's, it's a big correction, right? I mean, you're in the octagon, for goodness sakes. Dana's watching you, but there is a distinction. So Bo will be debuting in the UFC. Okay. And Bo told Ariel... I'm a main carter. Don't don't talk to me that way. I was the main event of the contender series twice now. Did the highest ratings they did. Don't don't tell me I'm I'm not a main card fighter. And Arrow goes, Bo, I'm looking at the card right now. The card is posted on MMA Fight, and it says that you're the main event of the undercard. And Bo said, I, I'll retire before I'll fight undercard. If you think I'm an undercard guy, just release me now. I loved it. I loved it. I, 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 the Darren Till and Duplessis fight is going to fall apart. I'm not convinced that Bo's in a position to fill in for that. I, I don't know what's going on or what thought process with, with the slow rise to Bo Nickel is. It is very rare that you get a media sensation. We just had one. It was called Shemayev. We could not build any stars since Shemayev broke into the scene because he sucked all the air out of the room and he got all of the headlines. So it's very hard to break in unless you're already a polished guy with a fan base. And I'll give you an example. Patty the Batty. Already established, had his fan base, had done his thing over across the pond. Very hard to break in because Shemaya was there. And now all of a sudden, Bo is getting a lot of it and he's not there yet. He, he is not still like the Shemaya thing was massive. The Shemaya experiment, that whole marketing plan, it was massive. And Bo wasn't there yet, but Bo is today's. For today, for the short term, and he's only been at this, what, guy? He's been in the UFC for 10 days now? His contract's been fine in 14 days? He's becoming that guy, and I don't like the idea. I'm with him. I don't like the idea of undercard him. I don't like putting him in there with a guy where, where the odds makers have it at a negative 1,800. I, I do feel like Bose, what's the point? You're talking to him like he's brand new. Is he good enough to be here or not? He got signed. Is he good enough to be here or not? He proved it not once, he proved it twice. The only guy that's had to do that, is he good enough to be here or not? And I also agree with something else Bo is saying. Bo's saying, you guys are talking to me of what you know. I've had a thousand wrestling matches against the absolute best, and that's true. Bo was on the mat, you can find it right now on YouTube, taking out Mark Hall for spots on the Cadet World Team. Bo lost a shot at the Junior World Team as a high school kid. He's wearing his Texas singlet on the mat in the finals. He loses to a sophomore who's a Division I defending champion named Gabe Dean. He lost 3-2. to two. Bo goes to the NCAA tournament. He's never not been in the championship match. He goes overseas into some of the biggest matches there are. His coach is an Olympic champion. His training partner at 211 is an Olympic champion. His training partner at 185 is an Olympic champion. I mean, for Bo to say that you're not going to give me credit for the thousand things that I did prior to being here, and you're going to tell me I'm on an undercard? Now, look, this is just talk. I don't know what Bo's placement is going to be, and whatever the placement is, he's going to have to walk out there and deal with it. I'm just saying that I like the attitude. I like the fact that he was saying it. And Bo has a lot of things going right for him that other guys would have already screwed up. And I, I give so much credit to Bo's father, Jason. I really do. I've known this guy for... Basically, my whole life, I've known Bo's father at a distance. I'm not sure that we've ever met. I feel like he's an old friend. I'm not sure that I've actually ever met him. But Jason's a wrestler. And he understands what it takes to train. He understands from a physical, but also from a mental mindset. And Bo Nickel did not leave State College. That is a massive difference from anybody else that's ever gotten a little bit of run. I tell you guys all the time, nothing destroyed my team. My team of Team Quest, nothing destroyed us more than the Ultimate Fighter. I have one teammate that's my teammate to this day that went on the Ultimate Fighter. 
And even he left for four or five years, but he came back. I mean, I'm just sharing for you. We didn't have anybody go off to that experience, get that attention, get a little bit of money, get a little bit and come back home. And I just share with you, Bo Nickel, who's aligned himself with a mega gym out of Miami, ATT, but who has chosen to stay in state college. It's a very responsible move. And I know that his father, Jason, is partly behind. I just know it. I haven't talked. I know I'm right. It is a massive competitive advantage. You can go out to the mega gym and you can surround yourself and you can get on the media and you can get on Instagram. You can go do those things and hang out with these guys that are cool and popular and famous. You can do that or you can stay right here in the cornfields and every day go in, have a coach who's Olympic champion, a workout partner who's Olympic champion, and another workout partner who's the Olympic champion. And you can take your beatings and you can give, right? Don't act like Bo's just getting pushed around by these guys. He's in there competing, but I've seen so many guys, guys that were great wrestlers to stop wrestling. As soon as you stop wrestling, please don't tell me that you're a great wrestler. You were a great wrestler. As soon as you stop, the moment that you are no longer a card carrying member of USAW, please don't tell me that you're a great wrestler. You were a great wrestler. I don't care if that's one day removed. If you don't do it anymore, you're not great. You were great. It is a massive competitive advantage. We have never had a young guy go on and do great things on the international circuit that wasn't attached to a college room, not to an RTC, by the way. Sorry, RTCs. That's, it's not the way it works. The guys that do the best are the ones that stay in the college room. They can do that grind. They can keep up with that workout. If you're tough enough to go through an NCAA season, you are at a different level of toughness. It is the number one thing that is holding our Greco program back. We don't have Division I guys. If you could go train Greco twice a day, every day, somewhere, with Greco guys and Greco coaches, and you're picking up the bag, and you're, or you could just go train collegiate, a completely different style. And two times a week, stick around 15 minutes after practice and do some parterre. If you did that, you will beat the guys that only do Greco, for sure, not maybe. They won't even be able to hold up. The conditioning and the grind and the fight and the toughness are not even comparable. It is a massive competitive advantage if Bo Nickel is still in the room. Getting all these headlines and getting all this attention and every day he's in here being coached by an Olympic champion, working out with Olympic champions, reigning, defending, current. It's a massive competitive advantage. And you'll see wrestlers, and I, I could name them. I don't want to because I don't want to embarrass them. That's, that is not my attempt. It was just a mistake made that us other wrestlers need to watch and observe and make sure we don't make the same mistake. They'll go out there. turns out they got a pretty good right hand. They'll go and they'll fall in love with the right hand. Golfers do this all the time. It's called following love, falling in love with your swing. They forget all their other swings. They forget what brought them here. They don't keep that tool sharp. They get the dust up. They need a score. They need a takedown. They got to change the position. They can't do it. Now you get a grind. You get a scramble. You get something hard going. You don't have the lungs to do it. Nothing is as hard as collegiate wrestling. Nothing. Nothing. It's not, not remotely close. But because it's so hard, guys don't do it. Guys don't want to do it. Guys don't want to be in a college room. They get to the college room. Whew, I can move on. I can go do something else. I can even go to the Olympic team and not have to go to that college room, which is a good thing because there's a lot of Olympic champions that aren't going to make it in the college room. This has been tested. The Cuban who beat John Smith not once but twice came over to a Division Three program. A Division Three program. He got third. He didn't even win it. There's not, a, there's not a comparable on the toughness and the grit and the condition and the battle of collegiate wrestling compared to international or compared to MMA. I'm just sharing that with you. As soon as Bo gets on that plane and he goes to Miami, I'm singing a different tune. It is not going to be up from there. It is going to be downhill, and he might be able to hold it steady. He might still be the best in the world. 26 years old, he's going to get that second round of strength. There could be positives that happen. I'm just sharing with you. It is not going to be at the trajectory as staying in the collegiate room, doing the practice, and I mean all of it, the sprints at the end, the pull-ups, the whole bit, the whole two hours. If you do that, you are separating yourself. MMA guys can't get wrestling workouts. They can't do it. 
There's not a wrestling gym that will allow them. If you didn't go to college somewhere, you, you, you can go back to the room. Your coach will let you in. He'll slide you in regardless of what the rules say. Of course, you're an all mater. Come on in, get your workout. Of course. But if you didn't go there and you're an MMA guy and you want to go learn how to wrestle, you're not going to get in on those workouts. So now what are you going to do? You go find a high school that lets you in? Okay, maybe. But now you're a grown man that's got all this reputation in public and you're going to get your ass kicked by children. It's a great way to go. It's a great way to learn, to humble yourself, go in there, take that beat by the children. I'm just sharing with you, they don't do it. And Bo never walked away. It's a massive competitive advantage. I hope he stays right where he's at.